Friday the 13th, Part 3, has a fair amount of distinctions that has it stand out from some of the other ones. First big one, obviously, is that originally this was filmed in 3D. This is 1982, so this, this was a point in the 80s where 3D was making a comeback. And we saw a lot of movies from that era using this gimmick, I guess. Uh, stuff like Jaws 3D, Amityville 3D, and I guess it all really started with uh, Space Hunter, Ad Adventures in the Forbidden Zone. That, that, that was the one that uh, was the big production that brought everything back to uh, its analogific 3D glory for at least a brief time. Uh, but of course, I mean, unless you actually went to see the movie during its original release back in 1982, Chances are you've either been introduced to the film via VHS tape or DVD or Blu-ray, anything on home video, where for a very, very long time, you simply couldn't see it in 3D. Well, that changed a few years ago, about five years ago, I think. They came out with a, a Blu-ray box set uh, for the Friday 13th films, and they finally included the 3D version of this film, which was its original analogific, the, the red and blue uh, version of the film where you could put on the, you know, cheesy cardboard glasses and, and watch the movie as is. And uh, in, in finally getting to watch the movie in, in that format, it was kind of a fun experience for me. And I don't know, it, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad with the 3D. Like, I, I can assume that you can't top a theatrical exhibition, but of course, I mean, TVs these days, widescreen TVs, high definition sets, they can definitely give you the uh, the best kind of bang for your buck when it comes to home video ex ex exhibition. So it, w it wasn't bad. There, there's some good stuff that did indeed kind of stand out quite a bit. And, and the funny thing is, it, it wasn't always just, you know, the knives throwing at the screen or you know, the eyeball at the screen, or, or anything like that, but just, sometimes just like little things that kind of change the depth of field a little bit, like, you know, the the linens hanging in the the yard in the opening of the film, and kind of just, I don't know, uh, the, the background seeming a little bit further off, stuff like that, which, I don't know, it, it's all right, but uh, for the most part, I mean, I'd say watch the movie in 2D would be my general recommendation. Uh, th the only kind of disadvantage, though, is that because it was originally filmed in 3D, and I guess whatever 2D version got filmed alongside that, uh, the picture just doesn't look quite as good as, as some of the other films, unfortunately. Like, there's... I don't know how, how to quite describe it, but there's a little bit of... I don't know blurring a little bit on images that normally would have, you know, stood out in 3D, but it looks okay, and obviously if, if you were watching this back in the 80s or 90s on VHS, you wouldn't even notice, I guess, um, and until we get to the more high-definition era of home viewing. Uh, and speaking of which, we do have a new Blu-ray set, uh, which I talked about previously. It's the Shout Factory set, it has all the new movies, and this time around... There is the 3D version, and it actually is converted into a more modern 3D version for 3D televisions, which I think is kind of a cool thing. It's a nice gesture, but I don't own a 3D TV, so I don't really know if the conversion worked or improved it or, or anything like that. Uh, I haven't heard too much about it, but uh, I'd say, you know, it, it fares, probably fares as well as as the original 3D analogic version, without kind of the headache, I guess, that you might get from viewing in, in the, you know, red and, and blue uh, tint of, of the movie. Um, if there's one criticism I have about that Shout Factory set and its presentation of the third film, they should have included the analogic version. I think, you know, give everybody a chance to watch it, not just everybody with a 3D TV, which, quite frankly, you know, it's, again, a nice gesture, but maybe 10 years too late at this point. I mean, the 3D craze is, is pretty much 
over, I would say, uh, until it comes back again in another 20 years, which you can pretty much guarantee, because that seems to be the case. Um, but whatever, it's it's fine. And, you know, it's just a little extra novelty to the film and a film that works just fine on its own. Uh, another thing that makes this stand out quite a bit is that uh, for the first time, Jason has his trademark hockey mask, which of course is a big deal. This this is kind of the defining trait of the character. So it's notable for that contribution to the series, which it continued for pretty much every movie uh, to, to uh, follow. So that's great. I mean, we get the definitive Jason introduced into this film. Three, three movies in, into the series, which not too bad. Um, and I don't know, there's just stuff like... Uh, with the beginning of the film, with the opening scene, we see something that's a little bit different. We see Jason stalking and murdering someone other than the usual sex-crazed teenagers, which is so custom for these kinds of movies. We get a little break from that, which, I mean, it isn't completely unheard of, but certainly a rarity in this series. So we have an opening scene with these this... Uh, middle-aged married couple who own this little grocery store, this mom-and-pop operation. We kind of linger on them for a little bit, see their day-to-day -day and kind of their interactions and stuff like that. Just just to, I guess, get us accustomed to kind of the 3D trickeries, like there's stuff, you know, like uh, the wife adjusting the rabbit ears on the TV, which stand out and stuff like that. And and the husband on the toilet, and all, all this silly stuff. So, I don't know, it's it's a funny little vignette in and of itself of, of this, this couple who seems like they're, they would be more belonging in, like, like, Brooklyn or something, but maybe they moved, you know, just outside Crystal Lake to get away from it all, to from the hustle and bustle and crime and murders of New York City, but, uh, well, too bad, Jason... Jason got him, <laughs> so, so, so there's that. Uh, so I thought that, you know, it's, it's, it's a little gesture, but it's, it's nice to see something a little bit different to open up the film and get us used to kind of the atmosphere that they're, they're introducing uh, in, into the film. And, and this, of course, it is directed by uh, Steve Miner, who directed the previous film, Friday the 13th Part 2. Uh, so he kind of knows the territory, but he does different things uh, with the film. So it, it feels completely different. In, in a lot of ways uh, than the previous film. Uh, I would say there's more humor in this film. Uh, more, I don't know, standout characters. This, this one has decent characters. Like, we do have the, the tried-and-true final girl introduced in the film. This one's Chris, who... Uh, she's not bad. I mean, she's she's definitely worthy of note against some of the other final girls. Like, we had Ginny in, in the last film. She was really good. And, and apparently there were talks of having her return to, to this film, have her in, I don't know, like a mental asylum or something, which they ended up doing in, in, in Part 5. Uh, have her story continue, but I guess they kind of abandoned that, and that's fine. Uh, so we have Chris here, and what kind of makes her stand out quite a bit is that she's... She's a character who has previously encountered Jason without really knowing who Jason was at the time. So th there's this point in the film, there's this revelation about halfway through where she's talking to her kind of would-be boyfriend about this terrible encounter she had with this, this crazy woodman who, who was attacking her and how she ultimately got away and how she's still kind of scarred by that. And I think that's kind of interesting to have a character who encountered Jason and survived only to encounter him once again in, in this film. Uh, so that's a unique trait as well, I would say. And, and you know, it does speak a, a little bit to kind of the, the ways that they can give certain uh, elements to these final girls where, yeah, she's a character who has been victimized, traumatized. Here's kind of the the return of the victimizer and she's facing off against him again. She's she's not uh, going down without a fight this time around. So she confronts the 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 figure who who brought upon all this trauma and faces him head on and and wins the day. So very good stuff. Very good stuff. So I, I think Chris is 
is is up there with the final girls of, of of this series so i thought they did a good job with that and they have good supporting characters as well i mean like we have the hippies in the movie which is kind of fun i mean it's not quite cheech and chong but they kind of at this point they know their audience right so let's get some pot smoking filthy hippies in this movie uh they're entertaining and of course there's shelly who's uh a very popular character which i don't know it's still kind of hard to grasp if people do people like shelly or do people hate him so much noise bring up because he is kind of this annoying character he's always playing these way over the top practical jokes and really annoying everybody but you know we we kind of feel for him a little bit and we kind of get to know him a little bit more and and he, he even kind of has his own little side story where he's kind of trying to impress the girl and trying to be the hero of his own story uh in encountering this biker gang which which also shows up in the movie so i don't know it's, it's not bad the way they handle that and probably going against kind of the cliches i mean they always talk about how these movies are cliche and stuff like that but this kind of like takes a, a poke at cliches of like the 80s teen sex comedies or any sex comedy pretty much ever where you know like the homely guy is always going to get the the beautiful girl or here it kind of plants the seed of that idea and then kills them both in horrific ways and you know welcome to crystal lake right so all oh, that's great all oh, that's great and you know i think i think standout characters are important in these types of movies and you know not, not nothing too much nothing too elaborate but enough that it's appreciated that yeah these characters they're not interchangeable with a b or c movie in this series they're unique to this film and they stand out within this film and that's why there are so many elements that make this one stand out besides the big novelty of having it originally in 3d which they they do have fun with they have stuff flying at the screen like baseball bats and and yo-yos flying right at the screen and of course in one great scene which has some questionable effects but still kind of impressive where jason squeezes the guy's head and his eyeball pops out which is pretty cool and uh it's it's up there it's up there with with some of the best ones i mean it's it's hard to rank them all i mean i i really like the first two uh i like this one i like part four the kind of the original four are, are really solid but you know then then we have different territories and trying different things so i mean you can't accuse this series of being kind of cliched in its own way and, and formulaic in its own kind of way but they they always try new things they always try to to get the audience in over and over again which which i appreciate and, and they do so by not just introducing different types of characters with different types of personalities but also in fun kills and stuff like that it's fun to watch these stupid idiot teenagers get butchered by jason so that's all good it's a good time at the movies what can i say uh but uh yeah uh friday 13th part three uh, a, a definite standout amongst a series of over a dozen films so definitely worth checking out if you haven't already that's my review friday the 13th part 3 3d originally uh if you happen to have a 3d tv if you happen to have the new shout factory set and have watched it please let me know if it's any good i mean i don't know if it'd be worth buying a 3d tv at this point but hey maybe it's maybe it's incredible like avatar levels of incredible 3d <laughs> um but maybe not That'll do it. 31 Days of Horror. We're doing horror movie reviews every day this month. Keep up and stay tuned for more as we're approaching Halloween itself, the end of the month, the 31st. Stay tuned, stay scared, and until next time, I'll see you later.